reading from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. I want to do a couple of exercises. First, I want you to ask your neighbor. Say, um, neighbor, did you come here for an expectation? Did you come here for an expectation? Or did you come here to spectate? And I bless God for my brother, my musician. Amen. Amen. Okay, now tell them, say, if you came here with an expectation, came here with an expectation. God is going to blow your mind. God is going to blow your mind. But tell them if you came here to spectate, if you came here to spectate, don't worry, God's still going to blow your mind because He's going to show you what could have happened to you if you came here with an expectation. Now what I want you to do is I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, take a real good look at me. Take a real good look at me. Because I'm not leaving here looking the same way. Because I'm not going to leave here looking the same way. That's all right. Now give God some praise. So Ezekiel, the, 30, the 37th chapter, and, and I found out, Apostle, that Ezekiel started being used at the age of 13. Amen. How many know age ain't nothing but a number? Come on. And it reads as thus, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out of this, out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones mm -hmm. and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said to me, prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Yes. And I will lay sinews upon you, and break up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied and I commanded as I prophesied. There was a noise and behold a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. Yeah. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon me, they came upon them. And the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Yes. So I prophesied, and he command, as he commanded me, and, he, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. My God. Amen. Now, usually people would... Uh, that a subject if they preach from this talk about speaking life. Uh -huh. that, that's in here somewhere. But what I'm going to use for a subject today, say no matter what it looks like, no matter what, what it looks, looks like, like, expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Yes, Lord. Tell somebody else, say no matter what it looks like, no matter what, what it looks, looks like, like, expect the unexpected. Yes. Yes. Amen. You may be seated. Preach it, daughter. So before I go any further, I'm going to tell you the definition of a valley. Okay. Okay, so one of the definitions that I found was it said a valley was a low point or a condition. And in this one, there was one that was very interesting. It said any place, period, or situation that was that is filled with fear, gloom, foreboding, or like. Okay. So just keep that in mind. So as I was studying this text, a couple of things came to me. And the first thing that God brought to my attention was the fact that he asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? At first, it was the question that got me because I wanted to know why the Lord would ask him, you know, this om omniscient God, why would he ask, can these bones <laughs> live? But the Lord allowed me, he told me to not focus on the question, but focus on the response that Ezekiel gave. And Ezekiel said, O oh Lord, you know, thou knowest. 
So when I read that, I said, I read it over again. I said, okay, the thing that came to me is said, okay, Ezekiel sounds like he's weary. See, because when we have faith, if God asks us a question, we, oh, yes, God, I know you both can live because I believe in you. But uh -huh. he didn't even go there. He just said, oh, Lord, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't say what he was going through or what he had been through. Really? But his response to me, Ezekiel was feeling like, okay, God, I really don't feel like playing this game today. <laughs> you know whether the bones can live or not, so why are you even asking me? All right. <laughs> so this can also speak to Ezekiel's faith. See, God could have asked him the question to see if he was still where he needed him to be mm. faith-wise. Right, right. How many can say that we've gotten to a point where it just seems like we're not seeing what we want to see happen or, or what we need to see happen in our lives? Uh -huh. And it seems like we have so much faith and, and been so faithful for so long, but yet and still we're not seeing results. Uh-huh. Actually, it seems as though everything is going downhill. Though we're being faithful, our job fails us. Though we've been faithful, our relationship doesn't work out. Though we've been faithful, our family turns their back on us. And our friends talk about us. Though we've been faithful, we're just making it by paying the bills and the rent. But high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Except the unexpected. Except the unexpected. So then I started to look into it a little more, and I said, okay, God, what was the significance of you showing him this vision? What was the purpose of you taking him to this valley where all he saw was dry bones? I'm going to give you a, a few points, and I'm going to sit down because I feel God in this place. <laughs> and, and, and Apostle, you didn't realize some of the things you were saying. You was all in, up in my message. <laughs> But point number one, somebody say point number one. Point number one. The hardest thing to do is to see life in a dead situation. Uh -huh. Let's look at Lazarus. He was dead for some time. Uh -huh. and everyone had accepted his death. Yes. But when Jesus came, he raised him from the dead. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There are so many of us going through things and accept the negative part of it. Wow. Oh, I couldn't pay my rent, so I must be getting evicted. Instead of understanding that God is Jehovah Jireh, the provider. Uh -huh. Oh, instead of knowing that God is Jehovah Rock of the healer. Oh, I don't have anyone. I'm always lonely instead of remembering that God is Jehovah Shammah, which means the Lord is present. You, you know what? No weapon that is going to get you can prosper because that Jehovah Nisi, God is our banner. He is covering us. But we don't think about these things because we get weary. But my Bible said, be not weary and well doing for in due season you shall reap if you think not. Because things look rough, so we stop going through, and what happens is we get stuck in through. Uh -huh. We get stuck in through. See, because because we, we get uh, tired, and we say, you know what? Even though I'm going through, I'm even stuck. though I'm going through, uh, I'm gonna just stop right here. So we get stuck in through, and, and and that's why everything is always going on because we're stuck in through. But the purpose of going through is to make it through. Uh -huh. Write our own death certificate. Oh. Tell somebody, no matter what it looks like, <laughs> expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Okay. I hear you. Say point number two. Point number two. Love it. Obedience. Uh huh. Yes. Obedience is better than sacrifice. See, Deuteronomy 28 talks about. What happens when you obey God and what happens when you disobey God? Uh -huh. See, the funny thing is, uh, First Lady, is that you have about 15 verses of what happens when you obey God, but the rest of the verses, and it's about 66 of them things, it talks about what happens when you disobey God. How can you expect the unexpected unless you are obedient? Uh -huh. Great. So the Lord led me to believe that he took Ezekiel to the valley, to his low point or condition, to his place, period, or situation that was filled with fear, gloom, and foreboding so that he can encourage himself. Wow. Great. Sometimes we're so busy looking for other people to come and prophesy to us. Uh -huh. We're looking for other people to speak things into our life. When God is trying to say the whole time, I need you to speak into your life. Because since I already said it, what you're doing is you're confirming. 
deserving it. We as people of God need to stop looking for prophecies every time we hear about a prophetic summit, we go run into it because we need a word. Well, if you know the word, you wouldn't need a word. And what should happen is God gives you the word and you speak it over yourself. So if I spoke a word over myself and my father, Apostle Simmons, or, or Apostle Gospel came over to me and said something to me, what they're doing is they're confirming to me what God has already said. Okay, okay, let me move on. So Ezekiel had no idea what was going on, why God took him to this place. He sure enough did not expect God to use him to speak over those dry bones and bring life to them. See, this is why I love God, because he does things so unorthodox. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Right. I'm almost ready to drive, big bro. <laughs> he took Ezekiel into the wilderness. The he took him to his lowest point and showed him those bones. <laughs> and I can imagine that those bones have been sitting there in the desert for quite some time. Uh -huh. Because he said that there were many. Wow. And what I can imagine is that each bone had a name on it. Wow. <laughs> and I can imagine amongst those dry bones, high, high self-esteem was in there somewhere. Wow. Happiness was in there somewhere. Joy yeah. was in there somewhere. Proverbs 18. 